Welcome to this demo video about my MSc final project, an effort modeler for Houdini. The project is based on an existing API that has been developed at the NCCA. But first, let me give you a brief introduction to function representation or FREP. In modern day films and games, most objects are modeled using binary representation, such as triangle meshes, like this airplane, for example. However, this representation only describes an object's surface as if it was hollow. FREPs let us define objects using mathematical functions and can therefore output meshes at any desired resolution. In the following, I'm going to show you the basic principles and modeling workflow, as well as some examples of FREP nodes and operations. When we first launched Houdini, we can see a blank interface like this, and you might have a slightly different layout, but I'm just going to stick to this for the moment. And we have different networks, like OBJ network, where we have objects and geometry, uh, shop networks, where we could define materials, uh, chops, and uh, out, for example, for render nodes. So let, let's stick to OBJ for the moment and create a geometry node. Inside this node, inside this node, let's delete the file node and just create some custom geometry, like a sphere. So this is no different from the way you would usually model in Houdini. So you just have a traditional sphere. This has nothing to do with FREP yet. Um, to show you how you can use FREP, you simply feed this into an FREP base node. And then if we set the display flag to this node, we can already see that this is now using the FREP polygonizer to output this mesh. And what the base node does is it collects all the information from the network, so from all the subnodes. In this case, it's only one, it's the sphere node. It gets all the information, like the radius, what kind of object it is. It creates FREP entities out of that, and an FREP tree as well for more complicated operations, and then launches the built in polygonizer to output a mesh like this. You can also see now that we have bounds, so we can control in what area the, polygonization, the polygonization is happening, and also to what detail and at what resolution. Now that we've seen the basic principles of how to use an effort base node in order to output a mesh, we can look at the other operations, uh, blending operations and point operations that we can use with, with the effort modeler. So the basic primitives that are supported is, as we saw in the, this, as we've seen the sphere, the box, we have two, we can make a torus and also cone. So that is that. And using that, we can now have different other nodes, like the bend node, for example, that allows us to create and bend existing objects. So this is basically just this box here, as you can see, that is then bent using the parameters defined in the bend node. We have, for example, a twist node that allows us to do a have a structure like this also very useful and we have something like the form point which this one is simply if I bump this up a bit this one is not it's not two shapes that are blended together this is one shape and this is just using a target point that is somewhere up here and if we visualize that we can see that this grid up here actually represents this point. So with that we can we can then move this up and down to, to control the shape. So now that we looked at the basic operations we can also combine objects together and blend them. So if we start off with a sphere like this and a box we can feed them together into an FREP CSG node that allows us to, to do um, constructive solid geometry like union, subtraction, intersection, and then output the mesh. We can also 
do subtraction so we can subtract one shape from the other one we can have stuff like blending so it is not simply just uniting these two it is also blending over and we have a set of blending values that also can be animated um, as we see here to create very interesting results notice that here we we can see that this hits the border um, so of the of the bounding box of the effort polygonization this is why this is not being polygonized by just increasing these bounds a bit we can see that this can be fixed very easily also you can see that at this grid resolution it is very smooth and even uh, the animation works without a problem if we want to have um, a more detailed mesh we can increase the grid, increase the grid resolution or use another polygonization method another blend node is the bounded blend node in which we can have one two spheres and then a third sphere that can control where the blend is happening and if we select select uh, any of the of the primitive types hit enter we can then go and control them using the tools we can use the scaling to make this bigger and also yeah we can rotate and move this around in any in any direction we want to show you a bit of the modeling workflow in action I'm gonna add a recess to this screw here so the screw itself is constructed based on a simple cone that I moved around in position and a box that I twisted within these bounds and then combining them together using an FREP blend node. So to add the recess let's just create a box and position it where we want our recess to be maybe something like this and then that looks pretty okay I guess and now we want to subtract that from the current node we already have not a cylinder we want to have a CSG node so we feed that into the CSG node the operation of the CSG node is subtraction and there we go we can increase the resolution again with a subdivision count of 2 and we will have this really nice mesh. Now that we've done a bit of modeling and we have this model of a screw, we can do a lot of interesting things with it and one of it is using the metamorphosis node as shown here to create a metamorphosis between this object and another one. So as we can see here, this is our screw and on the other side of the network, this is the penguin, this one. And we're feeding these two together into a metamorphosis node and we animate the alpha over 24 frames from 0 to 1. And this interpolation of this um, attribute causes uh, this this very nice animation to happen and if I replay this it looks something like this okay um, one thing to to mention here as well in that context is I'm using the file node in here to save the geometry that the effort node is creating at any frame back to disk so this creates a bunch of files on my hard drive which I then read back using another file sub and the, the read file um, operation here. Uh, this way uh, when I'm now replaying it it doesn't have to go through the whole network build the FREP entities, fill them, build the tree, evaluate, polygonize at every single frame it can actually just display the geometry that is kind of like pre-saved and cached to disk. So this is uh, one little trick that you can use with, with anything in Houdini but especially with, 
um, FREPs in this regard when you don't want to reevaluate certain parts of your tree.